Rahim. The subject of the lecture is the biosynthesis of adrenal, cortisol, and androgens. But let us first review a few concepts that we have discussed before. The first point is that the major hormones secreted by the adrenal cortex are cortisol, and androgens, and these are produced from the zona fasciculata reticularis, while in zona glomerulosa, the major hormone produced is aldosterone. The second point we want to talk about is that most of the steroidogenic enzymes belong to the family of cytochrome P450 oxygenases. Only one enzyme we have mentioned is a non-P450 enzyme, and that is 3-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. It is a microsomal enzyme that does not belong to the P450 cytochrome oxygenases. As far as the compartmentalization of the steroidogenic enzymes is concerned, we have three mitochondrial enzymes, namely the side chain cleavage enzyme, which catalyzes the rate limiting step of cleaving six carbons from the side chain of cholesterol, and the 11 hydroxylase enzyme. And lastly, in zona glomerulosa, aldosterone synthase is a mitochondrial enzyme. Remember, we mentioned that we have two functional cortical zones, namely zona glomerulosa, which is characterized by the production of aldosterone because it has the enzyme aldosterone synthase, which is missing in the zona fasciculata reticularis. Two steroidogenic enzymes are produced by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, 17-alpha hydroxylase, which also possesses 17-20 lyase activity that's functioning in androgen biosynthesis. The second enzyme which belongs to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is the 3 hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase which is a non-P450 enzyme. Another point to be reviewed in relation to the synthesis of cholesterol and androgens by the zona fasciculata reticularis is the cholesterol uptake and synthesis. This is because, as we know, like all steroid hormones, the synthesis of cortisol and androgens by the zona fasciculata reticularis begins with cholesterol. As we mentioned before, plasma lipoproteins are the major source of adrenal cholesterol. But synthesis within the gland can also take place from acetyl-CoA. The low-density lipoproteins account for about 80% of cholesterol delivered to the adrenal gland. And uh, there is a small pool of free cholesterol available for rapid synthesis. When stimulation occurs, and we are going to talk about that in some detail later, hydrolysis of stored cholesterol esters takes place to free cholesterol. And also, the uptake of plasma lipoproteins is increased. In addition, the de novo synthesis of cholesterol within the cell also increases. An additional point in relation to the acute response to a steroidogenic stimulus is the fact that such acute response to a steroidogenic stimulus is mediated by the steroidogenic acute regulatory protein, which is called STAR. This mitochondrial phosphoprotein enhances cholesterol transport 
So it is a kind of a transporter for cholesterol from the outer to the inner mitochondrial membrane. This star molecule, if mutated, this results in a disease called congenital lipoid adrenal hyperplasia, which is characterized by severe cortisol and aldosterone deficiencies because of the failure of cholesterol to enter into the mitochondria for the first rate-limiting step, which is the cleavage of the six carbons from the side chain. The last point which we need to briefly review is the conversion of cholesterol to pregnenolone, which is the rate-limiting step. Also, this step is a major site for regulation by ACTH, and as we know, it occurs in the mitochondria, and simply it involves two hydroxylation events in the side chain, which is followed by the cleavage of cholesterol between C20 and C22. This step is catalyzed by the side chain cleavage enzyme. For each step, it needs molecular oxygen and two electrons. The electrons are donated by NADPH, and they are transferred to an intermediary system, first to adrenodoxin reductase enzyme, and then to adrenodoxin, which is an iron sulfur protein, and lastly to the enzyme. Then the resulting pregnenolone is transported outside the mitochondria before further steroid synthesis occurs. Now let us move on to the synthesis of cortisol. And everything, as we know, starts from cholesterol. So the first step is the side chain cleavage of six carbons from cholesterol so that the 21 carbon pregnenolone is produced and it is transported outside the mitochondria for further steps in steroid biosynthesis. This is the 21 carbon pregnenolone after cleavage of the six carbons from the side chain. Then cortisol synthesis proceeds by 17-alpha-hydroxylation of pregnenolone by 17-alpha-hydroxylase. This happens after the translocation of pregnenolone from the mitochondria into the smooth endoplasmic reticulum to form 17-hydroxypregnenolone. This is 17-hydroxypregnenolone. Pregnenolone and the 17-hydroxypregnenolone are still like cholesterol. They have a hydroxyl group attached to carbon atom number 3 and a double bond between C5 and C6. This 17-hydroxypregnenolone is converted to 17-hydroxyprogesterone. The conversion is marked by the oxidation of the hydroxyl group at carbon atom number 3 into an oxo group or a keto group together with the conversion of the 5-6 double bond into 4-5 double bond. The enzyme which performs this function is 3-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. It does both operations. The oxidation of the hydroxyl group attached to carbon atom number 3 together with the conversion of the double bond by its isomerase activity. So now this is 17-hydroxyprogesterone after 
the oxidation of the hydroxyl group at carbon atom number three into an oxo group and the isomerization of the C5, C6 double bond into 4, 5 double bond. This is the sequence of events in the major pathway for the synthesis of cortisol from cholesterol. So the sequence of enzymatic action involves first the 17 alpha hydroxylase followed by the action of 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. This is the sequence of events in the major pathway. But a minor pathway involved changing the sequence of these steps. In other words, in this pathway, the minor pathway, pregnenolone is converted to progesterone by the action of 3-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. This is the first step. And then 17-hydroxylation takes place after that by the 17-hydroxylase enzyme. Either way, we generate 17-hydroxyprogesterone along the pathway for the synthesis of cortisol. Hydroxylation at carbon atom number 21 by the enzyme 21-hydroxylase produce 11 deoxycortisol. So this is 11 deoxycortisol which is produced by the hydroxylation at carbon atom number 21 by the microsomal enzyme 21 hydroxylase. Then this 11 deoxycortisol is again translocated into the mitochondria in order for the next reaction to be carried out is catalyzed by 11 hydroxylase and this translocation is obviously because the enzyme 11 hydroxylase resides in the mitochondria. In the mitochondria, 11 hydroxylase as a hydroxyl group at carbon atom number 11 and it converts 11 deoxycortisol into cortisol. So this is cortisol, which is generated by hydroxylation of 11 deoxycortisol in the mitochondria in a reaction catalyzed by 11 hydroxylase. This diagram depicts the description we have just mentioned in details about the synthesis of cortisol from cholesterol. As we mentioned, we have a major pathway and we have a minor pathway. The major pathway involves the conversion of cholesterol to pregnenolon by the side chain cleavage enzyme. Then the conversion of pregnenolon to 17-hydroxypregnenolon by 17-hydroxylase followed by the conversion of 17-alpha-hydroxypregnenolon to 17-hydroxyprogesterone in the reaction catalyzed by 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. In the minor pathway, the common step of cholesterol side chain cleavage to pregnenolon takes place, but after that, pregnenolon is converted to progesterone in the reaction catalyzed by 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, and this is followed by the conversion of progesterone to 17-hydroxyprogesterone in the reaction catalyzed by 17-hydroxylase. In other words, in the major pathway, the sequence involves 17-alpha-hydroxylase in a step that precedes the reaction which is catalyzed by 3-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, which produces 17 alpha hydroxyprogesterone. In the minor pathway, this sequence is 
reversed. So pregnenolone is first converted to progesterone by 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase and then progesterone is converted to 17 alpha hydroxy progesterone by 17 alpha hydroxylase both ways 17 alpha hydroxy progesterone is produced and then 21 hydroxylation takes place by the 21 hydroxylase to produce 11 deoxycortisol which is hydroxylated at carbon 11 by 11 hydroxylase to produce cortisol and this last step takes place in the mitochondria like the first step of the side chain cleavage of cholesterol to produce pregnenolone. All the rest of this enzymatic reaction take place in the cytosol. So cortisol is the major hormone produced from cholesterol in the zona fasciculata reticularis and we have just described the major pathway for its synthesis and the minor pathway for its synthesis. The other set of hormones produced in the zona fasciculata reticularis are the androgens or rather the androgen precursors. We have two androgenic products in the zona fasciculata reticularis. The dehydroepiandrosterone and its sulfated product and also we have the androstene dione. In order to produce these androgens, 17 alpha hydroxypregnenolone after its generation is going to undergo removal of its two carbon side chains which are attached to carbon 17. So we are left with 19 carbon compounds, androstanes. The removal of these two carbon side chain is conducted by the enzyme 1720 lyase. This enzyme activity is part of the 17 alpha hydroxylase enzyme. It is one moiety of the 17 alpha hydroxylase enzyme, which is a microsomal enzyme. And this yields the dehydroepiandrosterone DHEA, which now has a keto group. Instead of the side chain, it has a keto group attached to carbon atom 17. And then DHEA sulfate is produced by a reversible adrenal sulfokinase. The other major adrenal androgen is the androstene dione. And this is produced mostly from DHEA. And this reaction is mediated by 3-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. Androstene dione can possibly be also produced from 17-alpha hydroxy progesterone by 1720 lyase. So we have two androgenic precursors produced in the zona fasciculata reticularis, dehydroepiandrosterone and its sulfated product, and the androstene dione. Both of them are 19 carbon compounds, and they are produced by the cleavage of the two carbon side chains which are attached to carbon number 70. Dehydroepiandrosterone is produced from 17-alpha hydroxypregnenolone, and the reaction is catalyzed by 1720 lyase, which is an activity possessed by the 17-alpha hydroxylase enzyme. So we'll end up with a keto group attached to carbon atom number 17 in DHEA. And DHEA can be sulfated into DHEA sulfate by the reversible enzyme sulfokinase in the adrenal cortex. The production of androstenedione, the other 19 carbon 
androgenic precursor takes place mainly from DHEA by the enzyme 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. Some of the androstene dione are not produced uh, from DHEA but come from 17 alpha hydroxy progesterone by the action of 1720 liase moiety of 17 alpha hydroxylase. Quantitatively, DHEA and its sulfated product are produced in greater quantities than the androstene dione. But androstene dione is qualitatively more important because it can be readily converted to testosterone. But this happens mainly in peripheral tissues, not in the adrenal cortex. So in the adrenal cortex, these androgenic products, DHEA and its sulfated product, together with the androstene dione, they have minimal androgenic activity, in fact. And they are converted peripherally into the more potent androgens, testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Minimal amounts of testosterone can be produced from androstene dione in the adrenal cortex. Lastly, I would like to remind you with the common pathway between zona glomerulosa and uh, zona fasciculata reticularis. Remember we mentioned that there is a common pathway which starts from cholesterol, cleavage into pregnenolone, and then the conversion of pregnenolone by 3-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase into progesterone, and then, then progesterone undergoes hydroxylation at carbon atom 21 by 21 hydroxylase to produce 11 deoxycorticosterone, which is called DOC, which is translocated into the mitochondria where the enzyme 11 hydroxylase resides to produce corticosterone. Remember, we mentioned that this is part of the only pathway in the zona glomerulosa, which goes further to produce aldosterone by the hydroxylation and then further oxidation at carbon atom 18. This happens only in zona glomerulosa because of the presence of the enzyme aldosterone synthase. But at zona fasciculata reticularis, this pathway stops at the step of corticosterone production because we don't have aldosterone synthase here. We have instead the 17-alpha hydroxylase which carries out the reactions which end up in the production of cortisol or the androgens in the zona fasciculata reticularis. So, still in the zona fasciculata reticularis, we have some production of insignificant amounts of dark and corticosterone, which have salt-retaining activity. This is insignificant in zona fasciculata reticularis, contrary to the situation in zona glomerulosa, where it is part of the pathway for the production of aldosterone, which goes further beyond corticosterone because of the presence of the enzyme aldosterone synthase. Thank you.